I just asked the question of whether he's a spy or not. And obviously, that makes for a good headline. People jump in. Do I really think the Russians are paying him under the table or something? No, but, you know, like so much of this stuff ends up being idiots who are co-opted mm -hmm. and convinced of things and had money handed to them and then don't really ask any questions. And Cliff Schechter. Our friend Cliff Schechter's here. Hey, Hi, Cliff. Cliff. Hey, guys. How are you? Good. I'm doing well. We had the gift that keeps on giving George Santos. Or we do. He is Katara <laughs> or Anthony Devalder or, or Katara or what is it? What are his other names? That so, starts with a problem. That's right. exactly. Yeah, so. so was it Politico? They flagged. They found this. They're the ones who found this, and it was a Wikipedia bio that was last edited in 2011. Uh huh. So this all right. predates all of George Santos running for Congress and stuff like that. And here, let me just read a little bit of, of the bio from Anthony Devalder. Okay. <laughs> Born to a Brazilian family with European background, on July 22nd, 1988, Anthony DeValder first started his stage life at 17 as a gay nightclub drag queen that, and won several <laughs> gay beauty pageants. <laughs> God. Oh my gosh. And by the way, this is be it's beauty pageants all in caps with the end quote, exclamation point, and the next sentence, although, with no spaces in between, and although is not capitalized. Just because it I know, Chris, like... you're very persnickety about capitalization Capitaliz punctuation grammar sure. in general yes anyways he went on to say although after meeting hollywood producer ling q known mm -hmm. producing independence day by steven spielberg no no <laughs> and oh older God. anthony then took his next step into into the beginning of his career in which he not which he spelt it which okay like a like like a like a <laughs> like a like riding a broom which okay he started he started a few TV shows and Disney Channel shows such as The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody and the hit Hannah Montana. Oh my god. Which means we get to ask Francis about working this, with This has to be a joke. This has to be a joke. Th no, this was last edited in 2011. What person named Anthony DeVolder is it Biden's time machine? Did he get in a time machine yeah. and go back oh and Oh my pump? god. He may have cuz he also invented time machines. This is true. Well, he's on the science I have a committee, so obviously. Of yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. He, he's on. Well, he's on the science committee. That was one of his committee appointments. That's true. So that he is knows, true. He he designed the flux capacitor. <laughs> That's right. He knows. So what is it? Two point twenty one gigawatts or whatever it needs. Yes. yes. He knows that. Gigawatts. Yeah. So gigawatts. He, he went on to say he he was he uh, he taped his first movie in two thousand nine, starring Uma Thurman, Chris O'Donnell. Oh, this is, the spelling on this is so terrible. Melissa George, Alicia Silverstone, and that movie was The Invasion, which is not the cast of the movie. Right. Invasion. No. Did he play like the, char the character that, what's his face, James Bond played in it? Daniel Craig in was the in The Invasion too, yeah. Yeah, Daniel Craig, that's what I'm saying. Daniel Craig was the main right. male character in it. So is that him? Was that really George Santos? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, George Bond Santos is a James. He's a master of disguise. He is. He's a, ma he's a master. Did you ever see, I just Googled it for fun. There was that infamous, not even infamous, like most famous college essay of all time that that kid wrote that went like crazy viral. I feel like in the 90s uh -huh. or somewhere. It was I like, remember when I was going to college. Bef like before, you know, Twitter, YouTube, or all of that stuff. And it, it ended up being published in Harper's. He sent it to NYU. And it was like, I'll just read you the first two sentences. I'm a dynamic figure often seen scaling walls and crushing ice. I've been known to remodel train stations on my lunch breaks, making them more efficient in the area of heat retention. I translate ethnic slurs for Cuban refugees. Well, that doesn't work so well anymore. Yeah. I write award-winning operas. I manage time efficiently. Occasionally, I tread water for three days in a row. And it kind of just went on like that that's, forever. And it, and it became like this phenomenon for all of us applying amazing. to college. That's George Santos's life, basically. Yeah, like, is, that yeah. essay feels like his life. No, I mean, I, I, I was just dying at all the memes going around, like, you know, oh, like, I, proud to be the first man on the moon. Or there was there was one actually celebrating him many, winning the Miss Universe pageant, which weirdly kind of got yeah. more, more accurate now than we ever make, expected it. Uh, yeah. Now we know that could have happened, potentially. I mean, he said that, the, that they should get a life because he had a life. He was just messing around as a kid. He's had a lot on, of lives, know? apparently. A lot of lives, yeah. <laughs> Honestly... Like the most, by far the best thing he's ever done is dress and drag. That's the one good thing he's done that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't look that bad in drag. Yeah, Katar Ravishay right. was not a yeah, bad looking chick. Yeah, you're absolutely right. <laughs> really? Like out of everything that he's actually done, like that's the one where I'm like, all right, man, that was a good call. Yeah. This is a, this is a very narrow thing, but on, on the, the show RuPaul's Drag Race, 
every season they do a thing called the Snatch Game. It's like they do a mock-up of, uh -huh. the, of the match game. If there are not drag queens out there right now perfecting a Katara Ravache for the match game <laughs> next year, yeah. that will because that that is gold. You will win. <laughs> Just sit there and lie the entire time and make stuff. Up. Oh my! It'll be kind of perfect. I mean. I don't know. So I did a video at, at my YouTube channel, mm -hmm. Blue Amp channel with Cliff Schechter. For yes. Interested. Yes. Cliff we Schechter, we have linked it. to it at, um, on Stephanie's Twitter and Stephanie's Facebook. We would have some of your guys? videos to, 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 to show off today, but because Stephanie's not here, I didn't have time to get to him. I apologize. Yeah. <laughs> it, guys, it's all good. I just, I, I mean, yes, I have to self-promote it as a rule. Yes. Uh, that well, when you say stuff, you have to. Exactly. Um, but, but, um, you know, and I just asked the question, I was uh, whether he's a spy or not. And obviously that makes for a good headline. People jump in. Do I really think like, you know, the Russians are paying him under the table or something? No, but you know, like so much of this stuff ends up being idiots who are co-opted mm -hmm. and convinced of things and had money handed to them and then don't really ask any questions. And like, we know it keeps coming out more and more. First it was, how do you go from rags to riches, right? The dude had a 50,000 a year job, nothing wrong with that. But he didn't have money to put into a campaign. He had no money. And then two years later, he gives his own campaign seven hundred grand. He's worth a couple million. Mm -hmm. And initially, when it came out that this guy Anthony, I think is it Anthony. It's hard to know because there's so many names yeah. for Santos. But in Trader, I can't think of his first name. Yes. Who's a Russian American who manages the money of Victor Vekelsberg. He's he's the cousin is, of Victor Vekels, Vekselberg. Yes, and he, he's his cousin and manages his money. And Vekelsberg is a is a sanctioned Russian oligarch, friend of Putin, mm -hmm. who took over the aluminum aluminum industry there when everything was privatized and these all these these vicious sort of like vampires who didn't care about anybody else grabbed various industries and, and made themselves wealthy. That's what it, and so, you know, anybody who didn't believe there was something going on there, and then of course we found out that he had a business with Intrader. So Intrader could have dumped the money in this business. Mm -hmm of his this crappy Ponzi scheme business and that money could have been laundered through. So anybody not asking this question at this point, if it was Russian money that put him where he is, you're asking the wrong questions. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it, one of the first things, when, once we start hearing about the, the money going into him, my husband's first call was, do we have like our first real Manchurian candidate here? Yes. Is this guy like, I mean, Trump, Trump may have been, it may have been Trump, but you know, and that's the point that I brought up is like, there's so many examples of this. Kevin McCarthy in 2015, when he thought he was speaking privately to Paul Ryan, mm -hmm. says to him, well, we, you know, I'm, I'm sure of it. I swear to God, where it was his exact words, that the, that Putin is paying two people, Trump and, and the guy you guys know very well, Dana Rohrbacher. Yes. From your sure. neck of the woods. Yeah. He's south of us. Um, right. More recently, Hillary brought up that she was quite sure, and she didn't say the name, that the Russians were grooming somebody in the Democratic Party. And then suddenly Tulsi Gabbard you know, yep. started attacking and using Russian talking points and, and and left the party and campaigning for the far right. Like anybody doesn't believe that this this stuff in our international age where bank accounts that are offshore can be hidden. We know they gave money to Marine Le Pen, the fascist in France, mm -hmm. like they caught them making bank transfers. So, I mean, it, there's just so much of this. You'd have to be completely sort of like blind to not sit there and look at this and say, Something's up. It may not be a direct, you're our spy, but here's lots of money. Hey, we'd like to sure. talk to you about this. But, and he's too stupid to, yeah. Well, and part of what that does is it creates chaos here in our Congress. I mean, w both parties recognize that there is a liar in there. Only one party has done anything about that. Mm -hmm. You know, we've, we've, we've done everything we can as far as pointing it out. But the Republican Party does not, they, they they cannot deal with this because a it would it could cause Kevin McCarthy as majority the way things are looking right now, and b he, like no one knows where his loyalties lie what his agenda is right for right. them they just see a vote that's all it is and uh, you were talking about Intrader. Uh, so look here the the New York fund manager linked to Russian oligarch that invested big with Santos now claims he was conned. Sure. So that's yes, uh, the guy that works <laughs> by who, but he, he works literally for a Russian oligarch that God knows how many people that guy offed to get to that, to, to make sure he remained in that position and his friends are Putin. But yes, he's been, you know, I mean, the Dallas morning news, and this was sort of shocking to me, mm -hmm. I wish I had that in front of me, did this report around 2020, 20, I think it was 2018 on the various Russian folks who, who had donated huge amounts of money. They did, it gave money to like Mitch McConnell's super PAC. Mm -hmm. 
to all these things like that. And I mean, I'm sorry, but like at some point you start asking yourself, is there an Americans like thing going on here? Because it seems like about 20 years ago, all these, you know, 30 years ago, whatever, these younger like Russians moved here, all of whom have relatives who are very wealthy mm -hmm. still in Russia. And they've got their now Americanized relatives here who they can transfer money to. And, and again, it's so hard to trace international money now. You, this, the whole system with the Swiss banks and the Cayman banks and the, the, the Bahamas and- Cyprus the, is I mean, a big hotbed for this too. Cyprus, right. So it's like, does anybody believe that there's, I mean, I'm sorry if I sound conspiratorial, but I, I've now come across half dozen cases of these Russian Americans here who are still close to oligarchs back home if you want to be conspiratorial, let's go back to you. You, you at the top of this, you were talking about Vexelberg being the aluminum oligarch, mm -hmm. who got an aluminum factory built in their uh, district in their state. Mitch oh, McConnell. Oh, that would be one Mitch McConnell. Yeah, huge, huge investment into his state. That's uh, that's Mitch McConnell, who's our Senate majority, um, well, Senate minority leader. I apologize. Yeah. It is 20 minutes after the. This is the Stephanie Miller show. We'll be right back. We don't have all those things here, so we're just going to commercial. Yep. <laughs> well, I guess that makes our naughty parts tingle. It's the Stephanie Miller Show. Well, uh, well, we got Tucker Carlson. Yes. Well, let's let's, let's talk. Right. Let's talk about this. We were going to say this till the bottom there, but let's 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 just play. What is going? Is Tucker like trying to allure big tobacco to yes, his show's advertiser? He absolutely is. That's uh, clip twenty-five. I, I, they hate nicotine. They love THC. They're promoting weed to your children but they're not letting you use tobacco or even non-tobacco nicotine delivery devices, which don't cause cancer. Why do they hate nicotine? Because nicotine frees your mind and THC makes you <laughs> compliant and passive. That's why What? they hate it. It's a real threat to them. It's, it's so it's a liberal conspiracy. I, yes. I, I don't, I, I always, you know, you always heard that in the sixties, use nicotine, it frees your mind. <laughs> I, th <laughs> I believe that, that THC was the big... frees your mind pretty well. Exactly. Wasn't that what Tim, what Jim Morrison was using during totally. that part of the movie where he's like wandering around the desert? Yeah. yeah. yeah it, was it was nicotine. It was nicotine, right? Because it frees your mind so much. Sure. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, I'm at the point now where like there are like tried and true conspiracies that Republicans run to, right? Mm -hmm. Vaccines are have always been one of them. You know that kind of floor, you know, fluoride. Yeah. But like big you know, tobacco, I don't even know what... sap your precious bodily know... fluids. Right. Yeah. I don't know what this even is. Like, I mean, they, they, they hate nicotine because it, it, it frees your mind. What is he, what is he talking about? And this is also two Fridays in a row where we've had Tucker Carlson on his show being an advocate. Last week it was tobacco and smoking cigars in Congress off the congressman's offices. And now this week he's talking about nicotine again. So I, I don't know what he's, yeah. I, I, I don't know what he's getting at. I suspect that somebody is giving him money under the table because that is all he yep, cares. Exactly. That's it. This is Seth Miller Show. We'll be right back with more Cliff Shecker. I knew, I knew diamond, but I didn't know silk at all. I just learned about silk. You're fantastic. You're going to carry on beyond, beyond anybody's wildest imagination. What? Did you know Diamond and I not hope that was a joke. Silk? I hope that was a joke. I do you think it was a joke? I don't know. I don't you know there's I think? no way that he couldn't. Do you know what I honestly think? What? And th this is how his sick mind works. I just put this together. You know how he doesn't know people whenever they get in trouble yeah. or they lose something? Yeah. To him, he sees dying as weakness. Oh. So he doesn't want to know her. Oh no, 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 died. no. He he no, he's saying he knew Diamond, the one who died. Oh, he is. Silk yeah. is the one who had just stood up there and talked before him and introduced yeah. him. And she talked about how honest, great he was to ahead. them and how he treated them like family. And then he didn't. Okay, so then uh, my bad, then I'm wrong about that. I, I didn't, right. I, I don't know who is who right. of those two because they both seems like such idiots. I could never watch them for longer than five seconds, right. if right. that. So like, I couldn't have told you which one was which one. Should we, should we play 20 for him just to give him an idea? Okay. Here's, so this was Silk before she introduced Trump talking about her sister who died of COVID, 20. still spreading conspiracy theories. 20. 20, okay. Here we go. Are Americans being poisoned in the wild when they want to depopulate and sterilize a large group of animals? They usually inject one animal. And then that one animal infect the rest of the animals. So technically, and according to the science, it doesn't matter if you're vaxxed or not. 
as long as the gain of function allows one injected person to transfer and affect another person, and that person affect another person, eventually everyone will be affected. And affected or infected sure. or yeah. And, and and just prior to that, she was going along the conspiracy theory of like, why are people suddenly dropping dead? And they're talking about so, virus shedding. That, so is that theory of hers? Is that the reason why they gave Donald Trump syphilis? Because <laughs> then they figured he'd just give it to everybody else, and we, uh, you know, you, sorry, I, I went there. That's one way. You know, I don't. I don't know what she's saying. I don't speak stupid, so I'm not really understanding her. What I can say is, like, I've seen some of these right wingers grab this thing and and try to run with it and say, you see the, you know, like the the vaccination and it's like she didn't get vaccinated. That's the whole point. Right. Is yeah. that they're two anti-vax nuts. You know, so and one of the anti-vax nuts caught it and had happened what sadly happens to too many people that aren't vaccinated. I mean, I don't know what I don't know what. <laughs> Like what? What's the theory there on 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 how this person's death was related to vaccinations when she didn't get vaccinated? Because Unless she secretly got vaccinated and lied to us. Or or as as Silk is saying there, she said that she was around people who had been vaccinated. Mm -hmm. Oh, so it shed it off on her, and that's and why she dropped dead suddenly, even though she's that's in the how hospital this stuff from works. November till right. De de it was December. Yes, it was in December when she passed away. Anyways, but back to the man of the hour, Trump. So he starts out talking about how great Silk is. Like, oh, I didn't know that Silk even was a thing, even though it's Diamond and Silk. Maybe he just didn't get past the Diamond part. Like, Diamond's the star of the show and Silk is... It's like Tony Orlando and Don. He's <laughs> right. a fan of Tony right. Orlando, yeah. but yeah. he does not know who Don... So he it's knew like who Don... Simon and Garfunkel, right? You just, you know, you're just with Simon. He's a you Simon. forget about Garfunkel. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's, that's kind of accurate, though, I guess, right? It's sad because Garfunkel actually had a better voice, if we're being honest, but, you know. It's fair. It's true. Yes. So then, after not knowing, after dissing D Silk on stage, not knowing who she was, he went on to say this about the funeral in clip number 22. I don't believe, you know, they told me, I said, give me a little time because I have a lot of people waiting for me back in a place called Palm Beach, Florida. What? They said, give me a little time. What do you think it'll take? Oh, about 15, 20 minutes, sir, in and out. I said, well, it can take longer. This is a little longer than 15 minutes, right? He was complaining at that point he had sat in through three hours of speeches yeah. <laughs> before he got his turn. Does, he's such an emotionally damaged child. Does he ever, I mean, do we ever have evidence that he's gone somewhere, be it a funeral, an inauguration, a church service, really just anything and for the entire time did what you expect normal humans to do and left without incident ever you mean like not... i mean go ahead i was saying not make it like about himself like he does in clip number 23 here mm -hmm. at a funeral how do we stop the cheating how do we stop it where <laughs> you get more votes but you still don't win and the answer is the republicans have to get tougher the top people have to get tougher and and you have to really swamp them there's a level at which even they can't produce. And so if you win big enough, you're going to get there. And then once we're there, we're going to straighten it all out and get it back to where it was. That was at a funeral. Yeah. So he's at a funeral. He's talking about himself because mm. that's what he does. Uh -huh. He's still what I love about him is I love always the vagueness, too, of uh, you got to get tougher. Yeah. OK, thank you for explaining exactly what needs to happen. And I mean, it's just always a series of, of like, you know, grievance BS from him. Right. And, and like, <laughs> I, I just, I don't know what to say about him anymore. I, I can't even believe we're, I mean, you know, they got what they paid for. These people chose to ally themselves with him. So they deserved that funeral from him. That's yeah. the best I can well, say. I mean, he, he, he paid and sponsored the funeral, paid for, sponsored the entire funeral. It was Donald Trump presents. Right. The, it was his production. The, the diamond funeral. But yeah, but did he pay the bills ahead of time? Because we know how that goes. All right. <laughs> well, I'm sure we will find out this week if you pay those There's bills. There's some folks who helped build the Taj Mahal who are still waiting to get paid. All right. Like, yeah. there's, you know, he's like literally patient zero of the check is in the mail. All right. <laughs> That's a good point. And yeah. I don't, I, I, A, I do not know. And B, I would not be surprised if he didn't. And C, 
I don't think Silk would ever say anything if he didn't pay for all of the expenses nope, for the funeral. Probably would not, because she can't keep grifting. You know, I mean, the truth of the matter is, this is ghoulish, but so are they. So I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm not gonna hold back. She'll grift off of her of her sister's death now. Absolutely, they, they she's probably are. demagoguing on her stupid show every day, and they did it. They came and killed her. You need to give me more money. I'm sure she'll do all that stuff. Make even, and now she's gonna have to split it two ways. She's probably psyched. Yeah, well, I mean, and to your point, you were talking about does Donald Trump show up anywhere and not make it about himself? I mean, you've seen video after video of weddings at Mar-a-Lago where Trump just wanders <laughs> into the ballroom, mm -hmm. does a toast for the couple, but the toast is always about him, the big steal, how could they steal this election from us? It was illegitimate. I mean, why he's would basically you... Buscemi at the at, at the wedding singer. Yes. Is, is essentially his thing. Yeah. He wanders in drunk off his, or if he's not drunk, up on his pills, you know, and his resentment and just starts complaining and, and, and about everything and yelling at people. And I think the only time I've ever Old seen... Old man yells at Cloud. This is true. Yeah. I think the only time yeah. he did not do that, to his credit, I think was Tiffany's wedding. He actually gave a really good. The, re the reports were he gave a very nice toast at yes. Tiffany's wedding. He did not it make it shockingly about, nice. Did not make it about himself for once in his life. And I, I, I'm, you, you know that Tiffany was like, "Dude, you screwed mom over. You screwed me over my entire life. Just <laughs> this once. Do not screw me over at my wedding. This is my wedding, and I'm doing it at your club. Damn it. Do you know that she was like that? Uh huh. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I, I mean, no, that's actually amazing. Yeah, because I, I, I did I ever t did I tell you guys last time I was on I was like back in New York, and we went to this nice Italian restaurant sitting there and my wife kind of looks and I can tell something's up and behind us it's Marla Maples at the table next to us, mm -hmm. who was like ended up because I know you know common folks said hello quickly and she's I, I always heard she was a nice person who yeah. was, and so I, I always you know was like how does she manage this and being yeah. around this ghoul. You know, but she's doing it for her daughter, probably, and and it seems like it actually worked in this case. Like he didn't destroy the whole thing. Yeah, I mean, it, it was the the one time, and I feel I can't remember when the wedding was exactly, but it was right after something major broke. It may have been right after the documents. Yeah. Or right after the raid, it was some. Was it? It was something had just prior to that because everyone was kind of like, oh, they're, oh. they're probably like, hey, oh. why do we have all these guests speaking Chinese and Russian and Arabic at her wedding? It could, it, why are they all going in that room with the documents in it? Oh, no, they all, they all canceled. They didn't come to the wedding because the documents had already been taken out. Yeah, that's what it was. Right. They're like, oh. Oh, let's go. Let's see who's on the phone lines here. Let's yeah. go to, let's go to, open the line here. Bernice in Santa Fe. We were talking about guns earlier. Hey, Bernice. You, you're talking about guns, Bernice. Hi. Hi. How are you guys? Good. You're doing doing well. wonderfully. Good. I have two points. First, I wanted to just mentioned that when I, I watched the interview with the young man who disarmed the gunman mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. the second location right. okay. and he, he said one thing that really reminded me of the Uvalde massacre he said that he saw the gun in the man's hand and he froze and he wasn't sure what to do Okay, that reminded me of the security guard at the Uvalde school you remember that he saw the gunman at the back door but he didn't stop him and I kind of think that part of their hesitance, and I think this can happen to any of us, is that they see somebody with a gun, even if it's a huge you know, rifle, and they're not sure if they're just walking around with a, you know, open carry gun or if they should intervene. That's that's part, to me, that's so, one of the biggest problems with the open carry law in general. Right. Is that you, you, right. you don't know what somebody's motives are. Because, I mean, if, right. if I saw someone with a gun, my natural reaction is fear. And whether no, they're a yeah. good guy or a bad and guy. And they want you, they, they want that from you. I mean, yeah, this is, Absolutely. I've worked on this issue and I mean, you know, open, trying to get it stopped in Starbucks and have worked on it with a couple different groups, which we did in Starbucks and some other places. It's insane, right? Because yeah. the whole point is, is that when somebody carries a gun like that openly, now the only thing you can, you can plan for is the moment they actually point it at you. Yeah. Like there's just, there's literally no reason for open carry to be illegal. None. I agree. It should, be, it should absolutely be illegal across the land. It's stupid is what it is it, because it, it means that law enforcement, as she was saying, they don't know what to do because you could just be legally carrying your gun. And of course, if you're not white, they'll shoot you anyhow. And open, open carry to me is 
you are outright trying to intimidate the people around you. You are. You are. You are trying to send a message. Don't mess with me. Don't argue with me. Nope. And if, you know, if I'm working at a check stand at a grocery store and somebody walks up with a gun and starts arguing a price with me, what am I going to do? Right. Probably. Its whole purpose is is like, you know, we, we, we say we care about free speech. There's nothing like that kills free speech, like somebody who has an assault rifle, like and freedom of assembly and other First Amendment rights we have. I remember Shannon Watts putting out there at a couple of moms demand meetings, a bunch of these guys showed up open carrying assault rifles. Gee, I wonder what their message was. So they're trying to shut down political, you know, like freedom of assembly, which is right there in the First Amendment. Sure. Right? Yeah. yeah. No, I, I, it's, it, you know, I, I, I don't know how we, we have to change We've gone something to such about... a stupid place. Yeah. It's just such a stupid place. Yeah, no, it's, that's... it's hard to even fathom. Let's talk to Denise in Virginia. She wants to talk about gun laws need to change. Hey, Denise. Uh -oh. Hey. Hi, Hi. Hey there. Uh. Hello. How are you doing? Good. Doing well, what do you want to talk about? Love y'all show. Thank you. Thank you. I want to talk about the gun laws in Virginia. Okay. They suck. Yes, they do. I've heard that. Yes, I am from Virginia. Yes, they do suck. <laughs> yes, and it's mostly because of the hunters. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. But but I, I mean, are, are hunters using assault rifles to shoot? If you use a if you use an assault rifle to uh, shoot a deer, you you have you don't have a deer. Yeah, left. you don't you don't have a trophy. Yeah, you, and have, you don't you have, have a meat. cloud of deer. Yeah, the thing is, I have to oh. disagree slightly there with respect. Okay. Hunters hunting, and I'm I'm not in favor of it at all, mm -hmm. and I could never shoot an animal. I used to shoot for target. Next time, I'll bring one of my little NRA medals. When okay. I was in camp, I used to target shoot and do all that stuff. You know, you, you, there's there. People have had rifles and, and, and shotguns and that kind of stuff for hunting forever. I'm not saying they shouldn't have to have a license and be regulated. They should. But I get owning those. Assault rifles are literally just a creation, like a video game, except for people die, mm -hmm. by gun companies to push on people, scare them that if they don't have it, they're going to somehow, they're going to be in danger at their local grocery store. And it's just, they've pushed this, this stupid product on people they don't need. That just causes death and convince them to buy it. Well, and that's also, and that's them and the, and it's Republicans and it's it's all of that. Well, that goes back to also how how the NRA got in trouble because of the or the the, the gun manufacturers got into trouble because of the advertising. Yeah. You know, this is your man yep. card. This is your masculinity. This is they've they've made that a part of like, you know, apparently you don't have a penis if you don't have a gun. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so related. That's why I did that ad you guys played last time on the YouTube channel about SDE. Yes. It's so related to their fear of their small member that they have to have their little penis extension to feel really tough about that. Right. SDE is small d energy. Yes. <laughs> that's, that's right. That's the polite way of saying it on the show. This is a Stephanie Sorry. Morris show. It's 49 minutes if after. I, We're gonna I take used a... the P word and that maybe was bad. Oh, no, you can, say, ah, you, okay. you can say the P word. Yeah. It is 49 minutes after the hour. We'll be right back with more Cliff Schechter on the Stephanie Miller Show. You want to get nuts? Come on. Let's get nuts. It's the Stephanie Miller Show. Stephanie Miller. The things you say, you're unbelievable. That's right, Stephanie Miller Show. Yep. Chris and Travis filling for Stephanie. We've got Cliff Schechter here for us. Stephanie for the... will be back tomorrow. She will be back tomorrow. She was just a little tie tie. She got in at two o'clock this morning or from she, visiting her mom in North Carolina. Or she was a little butt hurt about her, her Buffalo Bills losing to the Cincinnati Bengals. Yes. Right, Cliff? Yes. <laughs> That's what I hear. Speaking of losers, Kristen Cinema. Uh huh. Ruben Gallego yes. has announced. I know. I'm excited about it. Our um, buddy Ruben. I met him or talked to him years ago before he's even a congressman. And I mean, he messages well. He's always been one of the best Democrats that way. He campaigns, he raises money. He's young, Latino in a state with obviously a huge Latino, Latina population that's growing. Veteran, you know, he's awesome and he's progressive. And I think, you know, three-way polling has shown if Carrie Lake runs, he runs about even with her, with cinema, getting 12 or 14 percent because everybody hates cinema. Yeah. But I mean, as you guys were pointing out, as we talked during the break, the reason that Carrie Lake lost is because a lot of Republicans couldn't vote for her. They don't like her. They couldn't bring themselves to vote right. for her even when they voted for other Republicans. And that's a huge group of folks that, that Gallego can win over. So, because there is still 20% undecided. So I'm excited for that race. I think we can 
we can rid ourselves of both Lake and cinema, and that would be nice. And and what can be interesting in that race is I have a feeling that Kerry wouldn't be the only Republican getting into that race. Yeah. So yeah. The, the primaries could be very interesting. Kerry may not win at her own Republican primary. That's a great point. I and mean, that, she just, it's not even on an ideological level. Like, she makes such enemies. She's so unlikable that, that everybody else seems to loathe her. Yeah. I mean, look, the, the, the head of Maricopa County elections, who is a, who's a Republican, mm -hmm. lifelong Republican, as far as I know, is still in hiding and has still yes. has police protection yep. because she's such a sociopath and keeps lying about the election and saying that he's part of the plot to steal it from her. Yeah. yeah. And so she's, that's she's not going to make a lot of mainstream Republicans like her. Yeah, yeah no. And, and, and she's a mini Trump. There was a, an interview with Benny Thompson where he was saying that members of the January 6th committee had to have armed security sure. because of the threats against them when they were doing their investigation. So, yeah. you know, this is a, this Republicans have lost their minds. Th that's the long yes. and short of it. Yeah. And, it really is. And something that might be as unpopular as uh, Christian cinema and Carrie Lake is uh, the Supreme court. Their ratings are pretty low right now. And we just had this BS investigation come back where they found they couldn't find who was responsible for the leak. Yeah. But then they pointed out that, oh, well, we didn't have any of the justices do signed affidavits, signed sworn affidavits for their statements, and they didn't interview any of the spouses, Jenny Thomas. <laughs> I mean, what an absolute joke. Yeah, that was. Right? The marshal of the Supreme Court, as I wrote down, here's how I picture that this went. The marshal of the Supreme Court says to Justice Alito, okay, you're not under oath. Did you do it? No. Swear? I no. swear. Pinky swear? Pinky swear. I pinky swear. <laughs> okay, he's good. Yeah. I mean, I mean, that's that's like the level of... I mean, I can't imagine a worse group of more obnoxious, arrogant, Alito overturning Dobbs while quoting a guy that defended marital rape, and Clarence Thomas and Kavanaugh being people that have never fully been investigated, who have obviously committed anywhere from sexual harassment to sexual assault. That new movie documentary just came out on Kavanaugh. Mm -hmm. I saved that for stuff you talk about tomorrow because the, yep. the producers of that came out with, a, I mean, they're talking about all of the stuff that was overlooked and not investigated. I mean, that's going to be, you know, that's coming out Sundance this year. That's going to, yeah. I'm hoping, Dylan does a lot of movie acquisitions. My husband does a lot of movie acquisitions. So we get to yep. see a lot of Sundance. That's, that's so cool. one I am really looking forward to seeing. I mean, it's amazing. They've, they've done all these decisions, the Dobbs being the worst one. They've, they stole two Supreme Court seats, and they've got two people sitting there who likely are sexual predators, mm -hmm. honestly. How many I mean, of, them, how many of got... the people in the court lied during their hearings? Clearly six of them. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's, know? It, it's at, at this point... I, I they're just corrupt they're gross yeah. they're dishonest and you know they've, they've lied about everything they've got all these these skeletons in their in their past they go gorsuch goes and speaks to these right-wing groups and they claim there's no conflict of interest in Ginny thomas and i mean i can't imagine a, a bigger group you know of galoofs for people to be like yeah. how can i have any respect for them yeah cliff we're kind of putting this show here where can people follow you YouTube is the best place. Go there at Cliff Schechter. Pretty easy, you know, to, to do that at YouTube. Also, um, I'm still on Twitter. You know, Elon's crazy at Cliff Schechter. And, and we've linked to all that at stephaniemiller.com.